This is Lori Frary, and welcome to Pressure Valve. No long intros, just long content. Hi, JJ. We're back. Hi, Lori. Good to be back. I want to start off talking today about all the distractions and the hard to focus scenario that we got going on and how all these small issues and distractions are keeping people off balance and allowing for a lot of psychological manipulation to be going on and people can't see it. Maybe they do from time to time briefly, but how, how badly do you have to constantly check yourself and say, wait, 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 this is just another distraction. Oh, all the time. I mean, from the, the whole QAnon thing, and then we have all the Bernie memes and we have people focusing on all the women that wore purple to the inauguration and that's significance and who's wearing Stuart Weitzman shoes or Jimmy Choo shoes. And I mean, there's a billion distractions depending on what you're looking at. Exactly. And those distractions have one purpose, in my opinion, and that's to keep you from zooming out to recognize the macro plans and schemes that they have going on. They keep you engaged in LARPs and hopium and um, fear and all of that so that you don't jump in and really say, okay, what are they distracting me from? Like the great reset or the financial situation or the economic situation, how how much, how important are Jimmy Choo shoes to great reset that they want to change everything about everything. And you go to the world economic forums website and look at their plans that they've been putting together for years And I say years because it has to be years. There's no other way that you can have six, 10 levels deep of a hundred different topics that all spin together and connect dots to resetting the social structure, the culture, the the economics, the the financial systems, the everything. Right, together overnight. (laughs) Right. But instead, we're focused on reality TV stars and who, who they are and how they affect you. And who are these reality TV stars? Well, you look back 20 years ago, and I would ask any of you listening to try to remember if you gave 10 shits about who was the Speaker of the House or who was the Chairman of the SEC or the Minority Senate Leader or and, and what they said on a daily basis, what they were saying about each other. It's like we didn't, nobody even went on C-SPAN and watched some kind of right. Senate hearing or whatever. I was like watching golf. And, but yet today right. it's, Trump's Twitter is like a major source of, of whatever entertainment, even for people that weren't involved in politics, just waiting to see what he was going to tweet and twist his words or or whatever. And they shut that down, but you know, that's just one example. Sure. And the more uh, disjointed all of these different distractions are, the more chaos happens in your mind. And when you're in chaos, which is not a natural state of mind or state of being for the average person, is to constantly be in chaos, then you're constantly running on adrenaline. And we all know what happens when you have an adrenaline rush and it wears off, then you go into depression or lethargy or whatever. Right. And so all this psychological manipulation that people... Are, are they they don't recognize it on, on a daily or on a moment by moment that they're being manipulated and so what happens is is then all of those things when you start sifting them out among all the people this group focuses on this one group of distractions and this group on another and then they'll argue about the micro of the different distractions. 
you know, was that Bill Gates that actually got that vaccine? No, that was a stand in. Well, how can you tell? You just, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, I'm not. Look at his ears. I mean, it gets down right. to the minutia. True. True. And so, okay, so then that's creating division. And the more division that you get, the easier it is to distract people within the each little categories and keep them focused on those things. And then somebody out of the blue will say, what difference does it make? Why does that matter? You look at the distractions after you zoom out a little bit and you have to make yourself do it over and over and over. Am I be- you have to ask yourself, you're like cognitive therapy. One of the methods of com- cognitive therapy is what am I feeling? What do I think about what I'm feeling? What is what I think about what I'm feeling make me feel like and back and forth until you can escape that feedback loop. It's not affecting me how I think or feel if I check myself, because then I realize this isn't the, you know, my big picture of my day. Right. I mean, even I, myself, I reached out to you not that many days ago, just saying like, what, you know, I feel kind of empty kind of like uh, all of this leads to nothing, you know, and I'm I'm following these little trails that seem to end up nowhere and feels like grasping at straws. And that was your answer to me to zoom out, which, I mean, that really is the only thing that you can do, even if that's zooming all the way out to just the basics. Like, I know I believe in God <laughs> and I know that if I ask for wisdom, he'll give it to me. And that's pretty much it. That's like where I'm standing now on what I know for a fact. <laughs> but everything else having to be relearned. Okay. It, again, here's a zoom out example. You're hyper-focused on the election. Now you can ask yourself, okay, let's zoom back 20 years. Let's get, okay, Sherman, let's get in the way back machine for those of you who are old enough to remember that. And you ask yourself, have I ever been this engaged in the outcome of a, a federal election? Yeah, you know, everybody has their party and their beliefs and their philosophy and their politics. But at the same time, once the election was over back in the day, you just, well, damn, I lost or yay, I won. And then you go on about your day or your business or your life. But this time we had the whole big blown up if then Trump's going to do this and he, they're catching these guys and they fake that and they're going to get arrested. And this has been going on and building for four years. And then, well, tomorrow they're going to, you know, trap him into this. And tomorrow they're going to the court and, and it just kept going on and on. And right. then, and then, wait till January 20th and the, he, he's not going to get sworn in. And, then it, you know, it just kept going and it's still going. It's still going. Oh, yeah. I'm hoping. Take, like saying to wait out and wait until March 4th. And, you know, I, I, I wasn't, I don't know, like I'm not that invested, I guess, but I have family members that are. So I was like a, scanning the crowd in the skyline for something to occur. And Trump seems so nonchalant. And so like, well, have a good life and I'll, I'll be back soon in some capacity that it just seemed like, okay, something's about to go down or he has some information, you know, and then to have that come to nothing is like, I, I'm not holding out till March 4th. They just keep moving the, the goalposts. Okay. So now relate that to other things like the pandemic. Okay. Right, right. If you, if you, do you, if you look at the psychological manipulation of the way that went down, well, it's, we're only going to have to lock down for two weeks oh. and this, you don't, don't worry, we'll get back to normal. And then it became, no, this is the new normal. And then, no, now we have to, you know, become even more stringent about masks and social distancing and lockdowns and don't care if businesses are closed. And people kept having hopium that soon the case numbers will go down, which they never do. And then pretty soon, oh, now we have the hopium of the vaccine is going to come out and then we'll get back to normal. 
And then it just kept, it, it's still going and it's going to keep going. But then suddenly, once Biden got sworn in, it seems like, oh, now so-and-so is going to open up their state or so-and-so is going to open up yeah. their county. And, and now it becomes, oh, now we were manipulated by political agendas. All of this builds chaos and they, they're coming at us from as many different diverse directions as they possibly can. Just in case you don't get tripped into this one, you'll get tripped into that one. And, you know, if you're in case you're the one following the cases and when are we going to get the the Moderna or the Pfizer vaccine and then it becomes, oh, we only have a scarce limited amount and they're only going to go to these people. And now you have to wait in line. Well, then it becomes when is it going to be my turn? And all of this keeps stringing people along with now. Because that's another form of the psychological manipulation is the scarcity factor. Absolutely. There's like backup plans to the backup plans with regards to this manipulation because they have computer programs and algorithms and think tanks of people and uh, focus groups and all of that stuff. And you're just you. you. All you got is, you know, your yeah. one brain and one a method of trying to sift through all of this crap. And then maybe you've got some family members and so on. What if you're an isolated person who doesn't have any family member that thinks the way you do or focuses on the things that you do or cares about them at all. And then you're even more isolated with your thinking and the manipulation works even better on you because now you're going to go try to find uh, some group of people who b- agrees with your mindset or your group of thoughts, your cultural philosophical belief system at the time. Right. And then you're going to end up in some echo chamber of those that think like you do, because nobody wants to be in a group exactly. of people. Nobody thinks like they do. Right. right. That's like really boring. And you like my monster truck rallies, but your spouse hates monster trucks and they want to go to the fashion runway show. I mean, you hate that. What are you going to do to compromise? Right. But there's something for everybody with this manipulation. And if you, if you don't know what these techniques are, and you've never studied it. It comes from the Edward Bernays School of Marketing and Public Relations ideas from a long time ago, and it's been honed ever since. So you've got whole groups of people lobbying for your attention, and they know that distraction creates attention. And especially if you're in a state of chaos um, internally, you're you're all that much more prone to go to the distraction because there doesn't seem to be like in my case, I don't even know where to go for facts sometimes. So I just have to shut down and, you know, put on an episode of the office or something like that to just detach. So it's almost like the Hegelian dialectic, like you mentioned, they create the chaos in us internally, and then they provide the distractions wherever you want to find them. Like, yeah. escape. Yeah. And then in a lot of ways, it's like being in a relationship with a narcissist. It is being in a relationship with a narcissist. People don't understand the depths of the narcissism of governments (laughs) and leaders. No matter how much they want to show it to us, you know. Well, they show it to us all the time. But if you're not sophisticated enough to see it and recognize it, it's like if you grew up in a narcissist family or a narcissist parent member, father or mother, and all you ever knew was being manipulated, don't understand that that person doesn't have empathy and that person doesn't care about how your emotional state of mind or being is, as long as they maintain control, that's, that, that's their agenda. Right. So if you grow up in that and you 
are so in it that you can't get outside of it until you get older to recognize it or do some research and study and somebody tells you, hey, by the way, your dad's a narcissist. And you go, what? (laughs) And then they say, well, here's narcissist tendencies. Does any of this ring a bell? And then you go, oh, crap. Right. I mean, now, does that mean you're going to be a narcissist? No, not necessarily, because I actually think that that's almost written in their genetic code is to be a narcissist because empathy is missing. It wasn't coded in until you get outside of your own box and, and zoom out. I mean, I just use that term, overuse that term, but it, it's until you look, get out to the macro version and look back at all these micro versions, you can't, you can't see you in there. Right. Okay. Let's, let's talk about some of these methods of psychological manipulation, especially coming from governments and agencies and NGOs and big groups like World Economic Forum and green warm global warming groups and so on or climate change yeah well i have someone send me something this morning um and i can just read through it and we can talk about the points but it started with hypnotherapists have been noting noticing blatant hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming techniques being used by the government and state-controlled media like just there starting with the repetition of the word the, the phrase the new normal um, social distancing, those were repeated so much that they're now a part of our everyday vocabulary. So, I mean, that's just one thing that I see right away. Um, and then it says fractionation, which is getting them to do something not once, but again and again, increasing the level of intensity each time. Um, so they started with the first lockdown and then there was, you know, the second wave and I don't know. There, uh, I know California salons have shut down at least three different times, so um, that increases compliance for whatever reason. <laughs> and then, um, if they had told us in the very beginning that these lockdowns were going to stretch all the way till Christmas, there's literally no way that we would have been okay with it. But they told us two weeks, and then they kept extending it, which is also, I don't know, so so narcissistic relationship. Like the gaslighting is is intense. The confusion, which we've already talked about, the chaos, the constant state of uncertainty. They use uh, repetition, repeating the same information over and over, which you can turn on any news station and see that. The cases are up, the cases are down, whatever. They just keep repeating the same stuff. Um, Give us the illusion of choice by making us believe we're in control. Two choices, both of which lead to the same result. So we could look at the election or we could look at, you know, which, like you said, which vaccine would you like, Pfizer or Moderna? Both of them are going to lead to the same shitty result. And then we have social proof, like all the celebrities backing backing the vaccine or backing the lockdowns. Um, and then finally, scarcity, which we've talked about as well, telling us that there's not enough vaccines for all of us. And I mean, all of these techniques are blatantly obvious once you see them spelled out all you have to do is just pause for a minute and look back and you will see them all you will see flatten the curve social distancing cases just the word cases is a daily reminder Mm -hmm. as a matter of fact just the other day somebody recognized they were watching cnn God, god help them and they noticed that their the the scrawl across the bottom of the screen didn't have cases listed there anymore. They had moved on to something else. <laughs> and but before that had been, for nine months that, that had been a constant scrawl, just like the stock market numbers. Once you get accustomed to something like that, you tune it out. Right. And you don't you don't notice it anymore, but it's subliminally going into your head because you're you're watching the screen people don't recognize subliminal stuff and but yet one of the habits that i've gotten used to is i i learned a good while back that the political pundits and the news readers 
are constantly manipulating what you're supposed to take away from listening to their broadcast. Mm. And so they tell you what to think, how to feel, fear or, or, or emotion of some kind, instead of just reading you the report and letting you decide what you think about it or how you feel about it. But right. They use emotional words and they inject their own, you know, spin and emotion into it. And there's no, you don't have any choice but to take away sort of what they, what they present. It's like an op-ed versus, you know, an opinion editorial versus just, uh, just the facts, ma'am. Right. Again, so here's what I do. If I'm watching a video or I'm watching a news clip especially if I'm watching it on YouTube or someplace, you know, or a website where it already happened and I'm just now catching it. I've learned to just turn the sound off hmm. and watch and observe what is on the screen that they're trying to show you and manipulate you with. Because most of the time you won't notice things until stop the manipulation, the voice manipulation, which hmm. is, the easiest way to manipulate people is with tone of voice and, and so on and what you're saying. And again, it always reminds me of the Harley guy on 9-11 who, oh, and then this happened and then the plane and then the fuel and it exploded and the building collapsed. And you're like, dude, how in the hell did you have all those talking points down so pat in, within minutes of, of this event? And it's because it was rehearsed, practiced, and scripted. Mm. And so there you are. A lot of times when you'll watch some of these videos, you'll, or, or better yet, if you can find some outtakes, like the longer version of the video without their little edited clip that they want you to see, then you can see the big picture of what they're talking about. And then you don't feel quite so manipulated. Well, actually, then you recognize the manipulation yeah. that much more. Why did you choose that clip to show me? With regards to the election run up and aftermath, I still see people who are, are, you know, emoting all over the place on their Facebook, both now they're angry because they feel cheated and they feel like they were used and their guy got beat and they don't like that. And you don't get to play best two out of three. It's just, this is what you get. And because they were so manipulated going in and I can't say that I blame them, but I wonder why I wasn't manipulated when they, you know, friends were sending me videos and, transcripts and documents and all kinds of stuff in my inbox prior to the election. So I didn't miss very much of follow the plan kind of stuff. All of it was speculation. There was no observable proof that any of this was happening or going to happen. It was a great movie script. Why didn't they make the movie of it instead of playing it out in people's minds? But that's exactly what it what it turned out to be. You, you were in the movie as an observer, as a part of the gallery, or what do, what do they call the people that are that don't have any lines? Oh, like just the extras. Yeah, the yeah. extras. And so you were the engaged because you were an extra, and the more you felt like you were involved in the decoding or once somebody laid out the elaborate plans of first, this is going to happen. And that's how, and Oh, and the, my favorite, this is happening now. Yeah. You're just not going to get to see it because they don't want to upset the public. They don't want to put the truth out there because it's just too much for humans, you know, for people to take that aren't awake yet. Talk about psychological manipulation. Yeah. Again, your mind is in chaos, panic, disorder, speculation, hopium. That's addicting. Tomorrow, I'm going to wake Oh, I hate to even go to sleep tonight because overnight, all this stuff could be happening and I won't, I, I need to be in the know. Then they had all these people from 
Simon Parks to Charlie Ward to all the YouTubers with breaking, breaking, I've got this info. Now what happens is that we're in that stage or those people are, are in that stage of the adrenaline now has run out and mm, yeah. there's nothing, not much. They're looking for any smidgen of the next thing. What's the next thing? And when's that going to happen? And what's that new date? You know, now you've got people waiting all the way until March 4th because supposedly the U U.S. corporation has been bankrupted and dissolved and Trump's going to be the 19th president of the original republic. Yeah, I could yeah. see all that happening. But I am I am I waiting with bated breath for moment by moment for what what happened to my life? What happened to my daily life? Yeah. When again, it's another one of the illusion of choice. OK, yeah. you've got people giving them two options or two choices. They've been using that with politics for forever. Might want to run for office, but don't even think about running as an independent. You got to run on the Republican or Democrat ticket or you don't stand a chance of of winning. And so they've ingrained that so much in people's minds that you have to be either or. I went to f get rid of um, my political distinction on my voter registration years ago, and it became this huge big deal to just be listed as an independent. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, God, if I didn't know it was going to be all this, you know, right? Uh, I actually did say to the lady that was helping me, it, are you going to ask me for a blood sample at any point here? Because it was just well, what all these questions. And, but anyway, so when you look at all this manipulation and you look at the illusion of choice, God, I mean, think about it. It's in everything. You either get the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine, right? You get the Republican or you get the Democrat, you get the great reset or the greater reset. Right. Paper mask or cloth mask. Yeah. You, you get the, um, the, COVID test or you don't. You wear the mask or you don't. You social distance or you stay home. There's nothing hardly in between anything. Right. right. And and they all lead to, you know, some form of our slavery in the end. Well, you're a slave to choices. Yeah. Again, I, I, I try to remind people, I'm sorry, but I'm going to call it the good old days when you made a choice of what you were going to have for dinner. And you made a choice about um, what you were going to wear to work or to school. And they were kind of innocuous choices. They weren't life-shattering choices all the time. Or ones that made you emotional. Right. Um, angry. All, you know, all, all these emotions. And so if you look back... In, when you were in when you were in high school and you had to take I don't know what version you had of whether it was called social studies or civics or mm -hmm. or what but you had to learn about the government and the you know the branches of government and the senators and the congressmen and what they do and how long their terms were and how laws were made it's only a bill and you learned the little yeah. song and <laughs> <laughs> and, but if you did the man on the street kind of thing and you went around and interviewed or asked people questions at the mall, do you know who the house minority leader is? They wouldn't be able to tell you, right. or do you know how long on average it takes for a bill to make it into a law and how, uh, what steps it has to go through. They would just go, who cares? Yeah. I, you know, I got bigger things in my life. I got to put food on the table. And it always comes down to that. I got to do my job. I got to put food on the table. And then I got to watch football on Sunday. And, the, and those are my priorities. Right. So now, compared to that, we've got people scouring through YouTube, looking for every little clip of 
what Nancy Pelosi said yesterday or what uh, Trump tweeted this morning or and so on. And I don't I don't remember ever people being so hyper focused on their so-called leadership. Right. It's- I don't have leaders. I've never had leaders. Hmm. And what I mean by that is I've never been in the army or any of the military service. So I never had to take orders like they do. And I understand why, and I'm not getting into that whole part, but I consider these people in government as paid employees of the people and always have. Mm -hmm. I don't think of them as somebody I got to choose between left and right or this personality or that personality or every little move they make. And yet it's so funny because I used to know this guy who was a political junkie and he went to every city council and county council meeting in my town. Every week, whenever there was any meeting of people who make the rules or (laughs) run the government. And he would sit through all of them and he would worry from day to day about what this person or that person or this group or that group was going to enact that was going to change his life, even uh, (laughs) minusculely, you know, okay, fine. That's something he was interested in, but he couldn't understand why everybody in the town wasn't at the city council meeting. This is that important that every single one of you need to be here watching what they're doing. And so now run that up the flagpole of what people are focused on with regards to politics today. Back when Clinton was president, it was all about the drama. Right. Oh, you know, the impeachment and the Monica Lewinsky thing and all of that. It wasn't about how that literally personally affected anyone. It was It was the soap opera of it. Right. The trademark of it all. Like a reality, like they're like the real housewives of Washington, D.C. Yeah, exactly. And they've made a reality TV show out of government. Wow. And I don't think most people recognize that. Truly. Why? And it's it's leaked into all forms of, of social media as well. People follow all of these political people political personalities can't wait for the next tweet to come in or the next YouTube video of some pundit or another talking shit about them. (laughs) I mean, you can watch two different TV stations and one's calling them the most despicable human being that ever walked the earth. And the other one is praising their every scarf mask they wear (laughs) matching combo. And how brilliant they are. And, you know, it's again, it's for the purpose of division. And the more division they have, the more Mm. groups and subgroups and cults and subcults that develop. And that never creates a good social situation. No. And it's it's become, again, trendy to be like a social justice warrior or, you know, if Cardi B posts something about immigration or whatever, it'll like it and hype it up and people can't wait to post the pictures of themselves with their little I voted sticker. That makes me, that makes me so sick scrolling through on election day, seeing all that as if that is interesting in any way, shape or form, you know, like it's, it's become a trend more or less. Whereas 50 years ago, they told you don't talk about religion and politics. And we just sort of voted for who we voted for and, you know, moved along with our lives. So as not to create all this division. Now it's just all out in the open everywhere. And every 19 year old with two brain cells has something to say about it. So, Well, and here's another thing that I challenge people to do. I want you to go, I don't care where, if it's Wikipedia or just put it in a search box in whatever your favorite browser is, but look for the list of presidents of the United States for the last 100 years with their party affiliation next to their name. And you will find, much to your amazement, that you never pay that much attention, that every 8 to 12 years, it goes from left to right, left to right, left to right. 
and I can't make a metronome sound <laughs> more evident than what do you think the reason that is? Is it because the people get sick of left and move right? No. Is it because the party in power takes too much power and there's a rebellion and they swing back to the other direction? No. I'll tell you why it is. And you can come to this conclusion yourself or you can call me crazy. <laughs> but it's manipulated. It's psychological manipulation. Yeah. And the minute I saw, you know, that Trump won and all the orange man bad and not my president and so on, I knew then that it was with, he might get two terms out of it, but, but by the next election after that, it would swing back to the left. Yeah. Because in my opinion, it's psychological manipulation, but it's also a selection process. Yes. They let you know in this last election, actually the one before that in 2016, they let you know with all, if you look back, you will see that when Trump won, there was a whole bunch of crap all through Congress about vote manipulation back in 2016. So that was the first time that they really let you know that they were manipulating votes. But that was our side saying it. Now the other side saying it. <laughs> well, they manipulated the votes. Okay. So if the left is saying it and the right is saying it, then what does that mean? They're manipulating the votes and they yeah. have been for a long time. They're just now finally letting you know it. Right. Again, let's go back to Clinton policy and agenda. And what was the big thing that Hillary worked on for the whole time Clinton was in there was health care. Yeah. And then what happened? George Bush, health care was out the window. <laughs> Then it came back to Obama, health care. Then Trump, health care. Make all these mandates yeah. about health care. And then Trump comes in. Health care was talked about at the beginning, but he never did much about it and not much changed. Then now we're back to Biden. It's going to be health care. And again, it's green agendas or, or the difference between the green agenda and the oil agenda right. <laughs> and it's back and forth to keep you distracted, to keep you engaged, to keep you manipulated. Right. And that's my rant. Go look it up. If you don't believe me, it's still true. Challenge to anybody should be, why is it that we swing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? And as long as we're swinging back and forth from left to right and left to right, there is no chance anybody in the middle is going to get in there. No independents, no libertarians, no green parties. None of those people are going to get in there because the impetus is too strong to go left against right. How have you avoided the, the LARP situation? And what I mean by that is not just the Q LARP, because there are plenty of people who will say it's not a LARP. It's a, you know, it's all happening. It's all going on behind the scenes. And if you're not actively involved in it, then too bad for you. You're just going to be one of those people that wakes up one day and is going to have to learn it just like all the rest of the sleepers. I don't know that I have avoided it all that well. I, I didn't follow Q. Uh, I don't even know where where his posts or where his drops come from, but I'm on Reddit a lot. And of course on a lot of different conspiracy boards and things like that. So I've, I've sort of been following the narrative, but I didn't get super invested in it. Do I believe that there's like an elite ring of pedophiles? Probably. Yeah. I don't think anything's off the table, but, but I will say because of the people in my life that are very involved in wanting Trump to be president or whatever, I did get sucked into the emotion of, oh, stop the steal. And um, they've so obviously been against Trump since the beginning. I started coming around to almost empathizing with or, or sympathizing with Trump 
rather than the other way around where I felt like I was neutral, you know, or, or felt like they're both wings of the same bird. I did find myself becoming really sympathetic towards Trump. So I don't know that I did a great job of, of avoiding getting sucked in, <laughs> to be honest with you. You, ha- you did tell me that you're kind of pretty recently red pilled and starting to look in, in, into all of this kind of stuff. Right. As compared to me, who's just like an old dog about it. I've been wrestling with this whole thing for two decades. I mean, I got started with 9-11. There's one of the differences. But the other difference is it didn't personally affect me whether or not anybody cheated or or whatever, because I already knew that they've been manipulating votes and cheating. They do it on local levels year after year and and national levels both. But it all comes down to, in the old days, it all came down to the local level because you can't manipulate a local or state race from the federal level. You do it from the local level. Right. I was going in knowing that they were going to play games regardless. One of the ways that can really grasp people, and this is why this they were able to manipulate you to the degree that they at least did, was cheating Mm -hmm. because that takes everybody back to childhood sitting around the table table with the family playing games and one of your siblings cheated (laughs) or you finally got old enough to know that your dad let you win at chess right because he could always just beat your butt (laughs) and finally one day you win and you go hmm did he let me win or did I win legitimately? Right. Okay. It's a form of cheating. It's a psychological manipulation. Cheating always, I mean, you you can watch any old Western movie where they're all sitting around playing poker in the saloon and everybody's having a good old time drinking beer, playing poker until somebody stands up fast and shoves their chair back across the room and you cheated and then the gunfight ensues, right? Right. (laughs) <laughs> and card. so cheating is like no good right across the board which well, just raises that like you said that childish sense of injustice sure now let's take that up to the macro level and i know i'm talking about the great great reset a lot but i'm using repetition on purpose because i want if you people have not looked into it if i say it often enough maybe you'll go open the world economic forum website for a change and look at the depth of the plan that they want to reset the world's cultures, the world's social system, economics, financial system, the whole kaboot. When I zoom out to something macro, like resetting the world, then these little minutiae don't be, seem so important. I can see All that. Right? Yeah. It, 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 somebody cheated. When you look at their Great Reset objectives, agenda, you realize they've been manipulating all these different areas for years to line up all of the chess pieces in such a way, or all the Stratego board with, I don't know if you ever played Stratego, but we did when I was a kid. And, you know, you got to get your bombs up there and your soldiers up there and everything set up before the battle starts or you're you're going to get your ass kicked. Right. You, you know, everybody talks about the art of war and all of that and Sun Tzu. And, but yet they, they don't realize that their own governments and these, like the World Economic Forum is not a government. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a branch of the New World Order-ish United Nations. Once again, you couldn't put any creepier guy in charge of it than Klaus Schwab. Okay, that should be enough of a siren going off when you see and listen to that guy calmly talk about what couldn't be described as anything else than depopulation agendas and eugenics and and all that stuff but it's all veiled with wonderful language and uh, and good sounding agendas 
it's not any different than standing before the Georgia Guidestones and reading the Ten Commandments of the Georgia Guidestones written in enough languages, carved into stone in enough languages for pretty much anybody in the world to be able to read. When you read those Ten Commandments, they actually sound very utopian. Yeah. When you read something like manage the world's population at 500 million people. It's a little alarming, yeah. All right. Well, it would be one thing to manage it once you got it down to 500 million people, but how are we ever going to get down to 500 million people without killing off a whole bunch of people? Right. Or to say, sorry, everybody has to get sterilized for two or three generations to get it down to 500 million people. Nobody can have babies, you know, blah, blah. And then by attrition, enough people will die off and then we might be able to manage the herd at that point. Well, we're going to be all old and weak by that point if there's no new life coming in. That seems like a wild, you know, I'm not saying it's not possible, but yeah. They don't get that far in their explanation, do right. they? Right. They just say what their overall idea for the for the world is and then unless you're going to go through the world economic forums website and read the plans down to i mean you could just pick one thing like global warming Mm -hmm. and you can dive down layers and layers and layers on that website into both vertical and horizontal agendas that explain how we can achieve this. The old rule of universal free will says you can't kill people, but you can allow them to kill each other and you can allow other methods that end up wiping out a bunch of people, but nobody actually murdered anyone. Like, for example, chemtrails or GMOs or vaccinations or any of these things, 5G, HARP. Perhaps a uh, deadly virus. <laughs> right. Create some bioweapon that, oh, oh, darn, it was an accident. It snuck out of the lab. Yeah. At the end of the day, until people s- start checking themselves and asking themselves, am I being, when they get emotional, That's going to be the first clue. I'm emotional Hmm. about something, okay? I'm angry, I'm happy, I'm dismayed, whatever the case may be. But some emotion that triggers uh, you to be affected chemically. I mean, at, at this point, it's chemically affected. Then if you don't ask yourself what's going on here and how am I being manipulated, it's just going to go on and on and on. Right. And you have to learn, you have to ask yourself another question all the time. Is this fear or is this danger? Hmm. And I harp on this. I've been harping on this for 10 years about learn the difference between fear and danger. Fear is in your mind. Danger is imminent. Danger is something is about to happen that it, it could hurt you, kill you, whatever and anything in between you know you got to think about it you got to you got to ask yourself what's going on here hmm. like the virus if they hadn't shown on the news clips of people dropped dead in the street in Wuhan China with the people with the hazmat suits coming up and attending them or whatever if you didn't stop and ask wait a minute Look at that cameraman that's filming this. He doesn't have on a hazmat suit. Must not be that deadly. One of the reasons why I turn off the sound so I can recognize things like that. That's so so the idea that I'm trying to get a part of, uh, get across to people is to stop and think, stop and think, ask, critical think, ask yourself, what's really happening here? Why am I emotionally invested in this? Why does this affect me so much? Am I being manipulated and who's doing it? Hmm. Absolutely. We definitely are being manipulated. I mean, once you all the time, no questions asked. So maybe just familiarizing yourself with what are, like I looked up, what are some of the 
ways that the government uses psychological manipulation. And this is all outlined in that too. Um, talk about repeating lies over and over, um, constantly reinforcing the greatness of, of our own country, our own people, um, polarizing everything, oversimplifying things and hammering points over and over. Like it, it's very obvious once you see it. it, you can't unsee it like you always say. And in so many of these echo chambers, uh, groups on Facebook, threads on Twitter, you can quickly see all the people pile in to join it, join in the group, join in the crowd hug. When you kind of zoom out and you see that these people are, are manipulating each other. Hmm. And then when you see somebody come in who has a different mindset, like let's say for example, you see a question on Facebook, you know, how you can make those questions and yeah. I've seen quite a few of these. Yes or no. Are you gonna take the vaccine when it's COVID, you know, obviously they're talking about the COVID corona cerveza right. vaccine? They if they they'll say, Are you gonna take the vaccine or yes or no? You know, don't elaborate, just yes or no. And you'll see, no, 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 depending on who their group is of their friends. Right. No, 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 no. And then you'll see one yes. Can't wait. So excited. Mm -hmm. And everybody beats the shit out of that person. <laughs> I mean, you're an idiot. What the hell's the matter with you? Haven't you been reading research? Do your research right. over and over. And then you'll see the same question from somebody whose friends think like they do. And that you'll say, do you intend to take the vaccine? Yes or no? Yes, 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 yes. And then some no will happen. Right. <laughs> and they'll say, what's the matter with you? Right. Right. And always, you're going to kill grandma. It's always going to be, you're yes. going to kill grandma. Yes. And the whole don't okay. elaborate. It's like, they don't even want your explanation. Are you going to take it? Or are you not? And, you know, there's always those people in between. Like, I'm kind of like, I want to see a couple million more people get it first. Uh, I want to see a lot more testing done. You know, I'm not saying definitively no, but probably not. You know, they don't give you the option to even say all of that. So you're just, it's the polarizing again. Well, and those memes, those question <clears throat> memes are passed down. Those question memes are passed down from social media manipulators from up above. Right. That's why they say, don't elaborate, hmm. just yes or no, because their intention is to create sure. another illusion of choice, right? Right. You've only got two choices. Keep yeah. let's just, oh, nope, two choices. Right. You don't I mean, say, I'm going to wait for a million people to take it. You, nope, yes or no. No, maybe. Right. Get me? And I saw that they were saying, or I read an article and it was talking about how they might not ever come out and say, you have to have the vaccine. It's mandatory, but they might slowly start edging people out of things. And that's already happening with the, the ticket master people saying that people would have to provide proof of vaccination to attend concerts or airlines saying you can't fly with us unless you've been vaccinated and slowly shutting things down to people that aren't. And that's how they'll do it. Again, still giving us the, the illusion of choice, but it's really not choice if you have to choose, you know, eventually between going and getting food because you're not vaccinated or not. That becomes like, okay, now it's life or death. Well, and the more things they pile on you, that you can't do without it, the choice becomes harder and harder to make, right? Truly, yeah. I mean, if you can't, if you can't shop and you can't, travel and you can't go to the, you know, you can't go to the concert and you can't do all these things, then yeah. it becomes less of a, of an easy choice to make where actually the choice becomes easier is what I mean. Right. And you're just like, what the hell? I know 15 people who haven't gotten, <laughs> who've gotten the vaccine personally and they haven't died. So right. that's good odds. Right. And it doesn't matter that thousands died that you don't know right just like they were able to sell the the coronavirus case thing 
I haven't, for nine months, I didn't meet anybody who was tested positive for Corona and said they were sick. I knew some people who tested positive, but they weren't sick. Hmm. I knew people who were sick who didn't test positive, but I never saw anybody who was sick and tested positive. So, Hmm. but that's just me. I'm sure there's somebody out there who had that combination or, you know, knew somebody, but my, my whole, my whole uh, choice has been from the beginning. I don't get sick. I can't remember when was the last time I get, got sick. My immune system's fine. It's not compromised. So I'm going to run the odds that I'm not going to get sick. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I actually can honestly say in all my years of research until this year, I never learned about the difference between germ theory and terrain theory. Oh, I didn't either until this year. Okay. Never heard it before. And apparently it's been out there a long long time. time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there was a new thing that I learned. And my common sense and my logic and the data showed me that obviously terrain theory makes a hell of a lot more sense than germ theory. Yeah. Oh, Did yeah. I enjoy learning and going and researching all of that? No, I could think of a hundred things I'd rather do than go dig into another research topic. But at the same time, I needed to check myself to say, Am I emotionally fearful of vaccines because of what I've heard from other people and from my online groups that I have been around for a long time who somehow the same people who believe the earth is flat, the we didn't go to the moon, uh, 9-11 was an inside job and vaccines are bad. Right. <laughs> They're all, those are all the people all think the same thing okay of course so it becomes easier to go well then maybe somebody here has researched this and or and now am i a victim of cult dogma right i have to go find out for myself because the last thing i want to be is a member of a cult right all right so from then on once i learned about the the terrain theory and about exosomes and all that stuff i really didn't give a shit about because I was never sick. Now I know. Now you're educated. Now I'm solidified. Right. And now I'm not taking a vaccine, not because I am uneducated or fearful or manipulated, is because I have data that has assured me that it's not a good thing to do, right. especially if you never get sick. Right. But another thing uh, you sent me, something on influence the power of persuasion by Cialdini and I watched a brief YouTube video and he was talking about one of the most uh, important factors in persuading people is showing them how many people like them have made the same decision so Mm -hmm. like something as simple as when you go to a hotel if they leave a sign that says please reuse your towels in order to save the environment that might up people reusing their towels by, I don't know what percent, I don't, 15%. But if they leave a sign that says 75% of our guests reuse their towels, then 26% of people more tend to reuse them. If they leave a sign in your room that says all the guests or 75% of the guests that have stayed in this room have reused their towels to help, you know, a cleaner environment or whatever, then that jumps up by like some ridiculous amount. So them telling you that everybody in your peer group has all gotten the vaccine or whatever, the persuasion of all the people around you have gotten it and they're okay is going to be really powerful as well. Because I can see that if five people in my family get the vaccine and they're fine, I'm going to feel a lot more tinfoil hat like about not getting it. (laughs) <laughs> because I love and trust them, you know? Right. Always good research kind of comes down to observable, experiment, test, reevaluate, take data, form a hypothesis, create a theory. Mm-hmm. It's in order to it. The less likely, if you keep that mindset, the scientific mindset, 
the less likely you are to be manipulated by by dogma right. and herd mentality and collective consciousness and so on on right. and at some point if you're the odd man out enough times sooner or later you don't want to be labeled as no matter what everybody else says she's gonna think the opposite 99 <laughs> percent of the people can't be wrong and you're the only right one or you're the only one that thinks the way you do right so that that's another form of manipulation and i got that from the truth or people on on facebook over and over in my inbox, you know, five different, I'd wake up one day and five different people would send me the same Q type stuff or a non type stuff. And sometimes the very same thing, it's circulating for on messenger and everybody's just hitting forward, forward, right. forward. So yeah. I'm getting the same thing over and over. And I think, well, isn't this classic repetition? You don't even know that you're doing it right. you're passing this information because you're trying to convince me that because i'm one of the only friends you have that's awake aware researcher truther whatever red pilled whatever category you want to put us all in that i'm one of the only ones who isn't all yay raw q and and the whole thing and every single time, you know what one of the other manipulations has been? What? The pedophile angle. Hmm. Pedophile, child trafficking, adrenochrome. Because of all, all, the all, all of that. Because it tugs at your heartstrings. Yeah. You would have to be a complete psychopath and sociopath not to be convinced that the whole plan is true because pedos right and, the and children and the symbolism all of it yeah yeah i mean come on nope you could separate the, you don't have to include that in there to add to the manipulative manipulative factor because that issue stands on its own hmm. i did research on that years ago when i stumbled upon the fact that all these millions of children go missing every year missing one thing never found never heard from again another category it's an astounding astonishing number both in the united states and worldwide not just children but people go missing never to be heard or seen again you're like how in the hell how does that happen? Let's see. And, you, and you can go by localities way more here than there and in this right. area or this country or whatever. And you can get really sucked into that rabbit hole. And, and it's, it's valid. It's a valid rabbit hole because I mean, that's a, that's a mysterious thing. Yeah. Never seen or heard from again. Like nobody's found. Right. Uh, in this surveillance state, with cameras on every street corner and yeah. supposedly 11,000 satellites orbiting that can zoom in on the face of a watch and everybody having cell phones on them. We can't find these millions of people. It seems awfully fishy to me. Then you have to ask yourself, okay, is that a real agenda or is that a controlled agenda on purpose to make fear? Yeah. Think about it this way. Did this just balloon out of control in the last couple of decades or specifically the last four years since the QAnon people five six eight years since the QAnon type people have been focusing on it and Pizzagate and all that stuff because when I was a kid oh my god I hitchhiked yeah. Oh my God, I rode my bicycle or all across the town to go visit my friends by myself. Yeah. Oh my God. We went off in the woods as kids together and built forts in the, you know, in the woods and sat around smoking cigarettes and whatever else, you know, somebody <laughs> brought a beer there, wine or something they snuck out from their parents. We did stuff like that all the time. I don't remember hearing about, I mean, it was on a rare occasion you heard about somebody was taken or kidnapped or missing or whatever. 
Right. And then now suddenly there's millions. Right. Is it true or isn't it true? And so that makes you have to dig in. Is it more true in China, which is one of the biggest surveillance states, countries in the world, versus the middle of Oklahoma? <laughs> you right. know? Right. It's it's something that you can really, really drill down on. Look what the consequences of that is. Kids have to have play dates. Kids, if you let your kid out off of your own property, you're accused of having free range children yeah. <laughs> or locking key. What were the kids that came home with their key, latch key latch kids? Key, yeah. Yeah. And, and so each of these, each of these things becomes psychological manipulation in my opinion. And for every person who zooms in on one of these things, you can, you can spend months and years in a rabbit hole, rabbit warren, going from dead end to dead end until you finally either lose your mind, <clears throat> become the nutcase of the family or the neighborhood right. or the group or whatever. I'm well on my way to being that. Well, <laughs> it's easy for that to happen. I'm kidding. It's easy for that to happen. I was known, for, I'm just going back 10 years when I really started doing a lot of research and uh, if I would go out to dinner with a group of friends, especially older ones, and I would start telling them about some of this stuff, vaccines, chemtrails, 9-11, you name it. They would sort of entertain me with it a little bit, mm -hmm. maybe for five, 10 minutes. And then they would say, you, you got to stop. <laughs> you really got to quit. I learned quickly to notice when the eyes start glazing over that I was right. done. You got to know I mean, your audience, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the kamikaze method, which was just walk up to somebody and point up in the sky and go, you see that chemtrail up there? <laughs> and they go, what? You know, that line, that, that, see where that plane and see where that white line and see how it's turning into clouds and see, and, and then you go, okay, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> walk off. No, just either they go look into it or they just go, that was crazy. Yeah, that was a weird. That was just a contrail and that person's gone a little nuts. You don't know whether that seed is going to grow that you just planted or whether it's going to just rot laying there in the dry soil. But either way, you can try with some of these kinds of things, multiple different ways and see if any of it works. <laughs> right. But Most likely I feel like you'll end up a viral YouTube sensation. It, again, I'm going to have to just sort of wind this down and say, learn to zoom out, check yourself all the time, zoom out, get in the macro, try to look around and see what's going on without you. So, hyper focus down into this niche or into this group of people or manipulated into the breaking, breaking, breaking. Oh, I got to be the one in the know. I got to be the one to pass on the information. I want to be the first one to post this on Facebook. You got to, you got to zoom out because until you recognize that you are being manipulated, all the time and they're gathering more data every single moment that you're online sucked into whatever uh whether you're looking up stuff in your search or whether you're in groups and having uh, see something on a, in a group page and you look at it and it goes 135 comments you go holy crap that must be intense and start click see more click see more click see more and try to read the whole thread and look at the arguments and the bashings and the i'm blocking you and the drama the minute i i catch myself i just go nope done i need to go paint my door or something yeah psychological manipulation learn to recognize it learn to combat it learn to not be a victim carry on your life Try to think 
bigger picture, try to look down the road, try to make goals, try to envision what's it going to be like next year? What's it going to be like five years from now? Not everybody's a futuristic thinker. I am. I happen to constantly be thinking about what, what things are going to be like, and then it makes it easier for me to recognize when they, the incremental parts are fulfilling themselves right. or, well, this and that and that didn't happen. And so that kills the rest of the plan, which is one of the things that's happened with this Trump Q plan storm thing is they just keep manipulating it with a new scenario that can or could or is going to happen to keep you engaged. That's why so many people are in sort of states of depression right now mm -hmm. that followed all of that for four years and it's not coming to fruition. And they know that there's only a couple of more moves left to make when this March 4th date hits and this stuff doesn't happen. This the government's closed. There's going to be a new government. Trump's going to be in charge of it. There's going to be Nassara. There's going to be a new election happen within a hundred and something days. And Trump will be the leader and, and on and on and on. All of that, in my opinion, is not only distraction, but it's burning time that you could be focused and understanding what the bigger picture is that's coming for you, the great reset. And if you don't get involved in understanding what's going on and be prepared to resist, be prepared to not comply, then time's burning by and there, that plan is going on behind the scenes. It is being manifested and you're not doing anything to stop it. Mm -hmm. And you're not preparing. So that's my warning. If, you know, if I were to have one is get off the minutia and the distraction, make plan B just, in, it's okay if you follow that stuff as it's just like reading a book or watching a movie with a good plot. But if you don't prepare for if then, if that doesn't happen, then what am I going to do? then I, you're going to be in a worse emotional state when you have to figure it all out in real time because they're marching on. Hmm. All right. Any last ideas or topics you want to jump in before we wrap this up? No, I don't think so today. I think we encompassed a lot. Okay. Well, to some people it will be beating a dead horse to other people it will be the first time that they've thought about some of these things. Mm -hmm. So listeners out there, if you haven't zoomed out yet, just try it. Just turn it all off for a few days and, and um, either look into some other things, look into the great, great reset, look into these agendas that have been going on for years, these plans, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, the UN World Economic Forum, Davos, you name it. There's groups planning and they're, they're implementing it as, as we speak. And if you're not ready, um, it won't matter whether Trump's the president or the United States Constitutional Republic has been reenacted or not. You're, you're not going to be ready in case that doesn't happen. So thanks for joining me, JJ, and we'll be back together soon. And thanks everybody for listening and we'll be back with some new content. Bye now.